Greetings, folks. It is good to welcome you to our service today. I invite you and welcome you to the United Church of Christ in Nielsville, where we are worshiping together this, this day. I am the pastor of the Reverend Jacoba Coppert. I thank all who are assisting in our worship service today, including our virtual choir. We also thank Jim and Karen Moore, who sponsor our radio broadcast today in honor of Mickey and Marty, as they look forward to the day when he will usher them to their pew in his signature white shirt and tie once again. Our music today is copied and streamed through our License with One License Net. This weekend, we are celebrating the Rite of Confirmation and the Sacrament of Holy Baptism. We hope you will celebrate with our confirmants and their families as they express their faith and become members of our congregation. I want to say thank you to all who supported these young people in their faith journeys, which have brought them to this moment. I'm inviting our confirmants to watch the services on Sunday so that you might welcome them into their church. Friends, we have come from many locations to this time and place. No matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. I invite us to share the peace with one another. Imagine that you are in this congregation, in our sanctuary. Imagine those who are sitting with you. Um, imagine those who have sat here long ago. And I invite you to share with them the peace of Christ. So would you put your hands together and turn to one another or to the, to the screen and say, may the peace of Christ be with you. May the peace of Christ be with you. We call one another to worship this day, and I invite Jenny Romans Erickson to join me in that. Jesus tells us he is the good shepherd. He knows his sheep, and they know him. Jesus calls us by name, inviting us to follow him. If but one of the sheep loses its way, the good shepherd will leave the others to seek that one until it is found. Lord, you are our shepherd. Find us this day, and any day we are lost. Let us listen for the voice of our shepherd, this day and every day. God sent him into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. We will follow the good shepherd who laid down his life for his sheep. Let us worship God our creator, who raised Jesus from the dead, and raises each of us to new life. Let us pray. God of love, make yourself known to us this day. Help us to grow in faith, walk with Jesus, and be guided by the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the, he, our, healing our brokenness and feeding our deepest tongues. We ask the new life Jesus promised. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Our reading today is by Jenny Rollins Erickson, again. From the book of Matthew. Then Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for the crowd because they have been with me now for three days and have nothing to eat. And I do not want to send them away hungry, for they might faint on the way. The disciples said to him, Where are we to get enough bread in the desert to feed a, so great a crowd? Jesus asked them, How many loaves have you? They said, Seven, and a few small fish. Then ordering the crowd to sit down on the ground, he took the seven loaves and the fish, and after giving thanks, he broke them, and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all of them ate and were filled, and they took up the broken pieces that were left over, seven baskets full. Those who had eaten were four thousand men, besides women and children. After sending away the crowds, he got into the boat and went to the region of Magdalene. Thank you. Will you pray with me? 
pray that the words that I speak are faithful to the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. That that which you hear is that which the Spirit intends for your ears this day. Let us pray. Grace to and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Confirmation class of 2020. It is told, the story of Jesus feeding the multitude. We got a problem? Okay. Confirmation class of 2020, the story of Jesus feeding the big crowds is so important that it is told six times in the Gospels. The only other story that is told in all four of the Gospels is Jesus' death and resurrection. Just before Jesus feeds the crowds, he heals people with all kinds of issues. Some are sick, some can't walk, some are blind. Earlier, Jesus healed a girl who probably had a mental illness. Jesus also brings healing to people who had broken relationships. He looks for the ones who are lost and for people who are without hope, thinking that their lives will never be improved. So no matter what the issue is, when people who come to him, Jesus heals them, teaches them, forgives them, accepts them, loves them, gives them hope. Jesus is there for whoever needs him to be there all the time. He meets in the individuals, the needs of individuals, whoever they are, wherever they are on life's journey. I also want you to notice that Jesus had compassion on crowds so big they could hardly be counted. Jesus didn't want them to, to be hungry and to faint as they traveled to wherever their lives were going to take them. When Jesus fed the crowds, he wanted them to remember him and what he did for them. Class of 2020, remember what Jesus did for you. When he walked on when he walked on the earth. Notice what he's doing for you today. Pay attention to what Jesus is about. I know there's all kinds of distractions, even today. I know there's distractions. I want you to be paying attention throughout your life to what Jesus is about. You know, it's always hard to listen to the voice that you need to listen to. In moment, this moment, it's mine. But always, it's Jesus' voice. Okay? You got that? So, Jesus, um, you want to remember what he did when he walked on the earth for you and what he does today for you. Notice where life takes you. Notice what's happening in your life. And, and then notice what Jesus is doing for the crowds. Pay attention. Jesus is, is there for you. But he's also there for everyone else. No matter who you are, where you are in life's journey, no matter what you do, no matter where you live, Jesus is there for us. Bringing us hope, healing, forgiveness, acceptance. Remember that Jesus is there for us. He also says to his followers that as he has loved them, so we are to love each other. Our neighbors, even our enemies. After feeding the crowd, Jesus sends them on their way. I wonder how their lives were affected by Jesus' healing them, accepting them, forgiving them, feeding them, loving them. I wonder if these people's lives were 
were changed by what Jesus did. And guys, I wonder if your lives are going to be changed. If you're going to have a different life because you're a follower of Jesus. If you're going to make different choices because you're a follower of Jesus. If you are going to continue to find a way to follow him wherever you may go. I wonder what's going to be down the road for you. Jesus is going to continue to be there for you. He asks, are you going to be there for him? I wonder as these people, these people that Jesus had fed, that, that crowd, and all those people that he healed, I wonder did they make different choices because Jesus touched them? Did they, did they remember and, and talk about what Jesus did for them? Did they go in particular places because of what Jesus did for them? My bigger question is, will your lives be different because of what Jesus has done for you? I hope so. Well, it's been a year. I almost looked up the date, and I forgot to look up the date that we actually began. But I know it was, I think it was a week before, because I was going to Greece. I think we, we started a week earlier than we usually do. And uh, so it's been a, probably a year and a week since you started confirmation. Uh, our hope is that you know God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit better now. And that your relationship with them is deeper now. And that it continues to grow. I hope that, that you will want to do what God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit wants us to do. What God expects of all of us. So, you're about to, to make some promises. And you're telling the, these people and the people who are watching on the internet, the people on the radio, that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. As you confirm your faith, you are promising that forever and ever, wherever you go, you're going to follow Jesus. You're telling Jesus and this church that Jesus will always be your Lord and Savior. The Holy Spirit, Jesus sent, also promises to help you wherever you go and remind you of all that Jesus did and does for you. God is never going to leave you, my friends. God is always going to love you. God hopes that none of us will leave him either and that we will always, always love the Lord our God. When we confirm our faith, we're promising we will walk with Jesus. You know those promises you're about to make? Uh, let me simplify them a little bit. They're hard to understand, I think. I, I have it, I translated them a little bit. Um, so, when you make the wrong choices, and we all do, when you make the wrong choices, um, my hope is, and your promises are, that you're going to choose to change your heart and your life so that, again, you will show Jesus that you love him. You are promising you will turn away from the powers of evil, the things that separate you from God, your neighbor, and yourself. Jesus promises us the freedom of life, the freedom and joy of your life. But friends, it's again your choices whether or not you want to do that. A lot of distraction. It's hard to say what it is now. Um, as you are sent on your way, you promise with the help of God to do what you can to love all people and work for justice for all people. You promise you will tell others and show them by your behavior that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. In marriage, the hope is spouses 
Joseph's love for each other grows and, and gets stronger. That happens when people go to do things together, when they go things through, through experiences together, when, when they get to know each other better. Then, then the love grows deeper. Is that, my, is that what your experience is? For the adults? Jesus is hoping that our love for him grows deeper. As you go your, your way into the world, friends, your promises are that you will do the work that Jesus calls you to do. And that you will continue to get to know him better. You promise to trust him and have faith in him. So I made my promises 51 years ago. I could not have made my promises without God's help and the help of my parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, godparents, Sunday school teachers, mentors, church members, and pastors. Neither can I keep those promises well without the continued help of God and the people of faith. You too are going to need God's help and the help of the church. Wherever you look, go, look for those others who believe in God and go with Him. Go to church. Yes, go to church. Serve in the church as you say your statements of faith that you um, that you that you are saying in your statement of faith. You're saying that you're going to do that. Let's do it. Look for places where you can grow in faith and do mission. Wherever you go, go with God. God will surely go with you. I also trust, wherever you go, you will find followers of Jesus to support you on your journey. Amen. Let us pray. our time, 
give generously um, with our own generosity. We invite you to send your financial gifts by mail, place them in the offering box in the back, or through transfer of funds from your bank or stocks. Let us pray. Generous God, receive what we offer. Guide the giver and those entrusted with the gifts to be good stewards of all entrusted to them. Amen. I invite to come forward um, our confirmants as they now share with us their statements of faith. Um,
most likely because it isn't a real thing or person. It brings us together as a team. The Holy Spirit helps us to remember what Jesus thought and what he was like. The Holy Spirit encourages us, but it's up to us to listen. That's how the Holy Spirit gives us peace, church. Through confirmation, I have confirmed my willingness to become a member of the church. I enjoy our congregation because, it, because of the relaxed and welcoming environment. Even when I don't come to church for a while, people are kind and not even to when I'm there. The church supports me, prays for me, and is there for me when I need it. I'm proud of the way our church serves us, our entire community, whether those in need of our members of our congregation or not. We care for everyone, no matter who they are, what the circumstance might be. My name is Roy Bergman. God is our Creator and our Father, who made the world, people, and animals. God is Jesus' Father. God is all-knowing, always there, and brings healing. God expects us to change our ways and repent when we sin. God continues to love trust and will keep loving us. Confirmation is important to me because I want to continue on my journey of faith. Through the confirmation process and with the help of my mentors, I have strengthened my understanding of Christ. I plan to continue attending church and trying to follow the path that Jesus taught me. My name is Paige Boyd. Communion. Communion has to do with forgiveness. People in the community, such as followers of God and Jesus, participate in communion. There are two main elements of communion. The bread, which stands for Jesus' body, and the wine, which stands for Jesus' blood. Our pastor takes the lead with communion and prepares the elements for the rest of the group. In fact, prior to serving communion, our pastor will say something like, come as all things are ready. When I think of communion, I think of how we all come together at once and share the elements. In the United Church of Christ, we allow and encourage everyone to participate in communion, no matter how old they are or what religion they might be. Bible. The Bible is a book about God and his people. It consists of two main parts, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament has 39 books within it, while the New Testament has 27 books. My favorite story in the Bible talks about Noah and the Ark. In this story, God warned Noah that a massive flood would be coming. In preparation, Noah built the Ark. People in the community were spectacle and wondered if Noah was crazy, but Noah trusted God and continued to prepare. I enjoyed reading about Noah, about how Noah or Noah loaded the animals into the ark two by two, therefore saving God's little creatures. My name is Bryce Erickson. Jesus, I believe that Jesus is our Savior. He is a miracle, he is a miracle worker, teacher, and preacher. He is the Son of God and Mary, and was born in Bethlehem. He was a physical person that slept, talked, and had emotions. He had three years of ministry. I believe that he served the Last Supper to his disciples, was betrayed, and was put on trial. He was nailed to, to the cross and then died for our sins. He was buried and he rose from the dead on the third day. To this day, Jesus brings people to God by his teachings and love for everyone. Baptism. In baptism, the water is used to wash away sins. People confess their faith and promise to give up whatever is evil in their life. Then God, with the help of the Holy Spirit, opens the way to a Christian life. Parents and godparents make promises that teach children about God. When we have an, an infant, baptism, when we, if we have an infant baptism, we then have confirmation when the person is ready to take over those promises and live in faith and become a part of the church. In our church, the whole congregation promises to give their love, support, and care to helping the child. The sacrament of baptism is an outward and visible sign of the grace of God. Thank you. It isn't quite here. It's kind of strange starting, because I left right away. You guys went to Hope Lodge, which was really super time. You had a good time with that. You did good work. Then we came back. Did we get rained out on, on doing our leaf breaking this year? I couldn't find a picture. Oh well, things were strange all along. You finished up with Zoom. You didn't get to go to my 
walk and you didn't get to do some of the things that you really wanted to, like lead a worship service, and it was going to be all about the Lord's Prayer. Uh, but you did read your and write your statements page. So I want to thank you for that, and I want to thank all the folks that helped the young people with that. So you did what you had to do as best we could, and that's how it is today, isn't it? Do the best we can with what we got. Okay, so our class has already come forward, and um, we are standing before you as people who want to confirm their or affirm their baptism and to be baptized. So, friends in Christ, we are all received into the church through the sacrament of baptism. These people have found nurture and support in the midst of the family of Christ. Through prayer and study, they have been led by the Holy Spirit to affirm their baptism and to claim in our presence their covenantal relationship with Christ and the members of the church. They are here for service to Christ, Jesus Christ, using the gifts which the Holy Spirit bestows. God's message is near you, on your lips, and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. If you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by our faith that we are put right with God. It is our by our confession that we are saved. Sydney, do you desire to be baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? Brody, Bryce, Cole, Callie, Paige, Parker, do you desire to affirm your baptism into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? I do. Do you renounce the powers of evil and desire, my friends, the freedom of new life in Christ? what all these mean. I rewrote them. Let me, let me read that one for you in my rewritten style. Do you reject the powers of evil? Do you accept the freedom free from power, sin, and death that Christ gives you? Do you want the new life that Jesus offers to you? I do. Yeah, I do. Me too. Do you profess Jesus Christ as Lord? I do. I do. I do. I do. Do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciple, to follow in the way of our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best you are able? Let me break it down for you. Do you promise, with God's help and grace, to be Jesus Christ's disciple? Do you promise to do what our Savior taught his disciples and his followers to do? Will you resist bullying anyone? in any way, and resist doing evil things? Will you show love and work for justice for all? Will you be Jesus' witnesses, um, making known what he did and does as best you are able? I promise. I promise with the help of God. And as it says in the bulletin, do you promise according to the grace given you? to grow in the Christian faith, to be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ, celebrating Christ's presence and furthering Christ's mission in all the world. I promise in the help of God. I invite the congregation as they would like to stand if they are able and respond according to their faith. Let us unite with the Church in all times and places in confessing our faith in the triune God. Do you believe in God? I believe in God. Do you believe in the Holy Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit. You may be seated, though for those who do not know, we have Sydney Sunday and her father, um, Butch, also John, I guess. <laughs> Michelle Rock. Ricky Roch, uh, Rochester, his godparent, and Aunt Tang, his godparent. Christ be with you. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for the gift of creation.
called forth by your saving word. Before the world had shaped and formed, your spirit moved over the waters. Out of the waters of the deep, you formed the firmament and brought forth the earth to sustain all life. In the time of Noah, you washed the earth with the waters of the flood, and your ark of salvation bore a new beginning. In the time of Moses, your people Israel passed through the Red Sea waters from the slavery to freedom and crossed the flowing Jordan to enter the promised land. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus Christ, who was nurtured in the water of Mary's womb. Jesus was baptized by John in the water of the Jordan, became living water to a woman at the Samaritan well, washed the feet of the disciples, and sent them forth to baptize all nations by the water and the Holy Spirit. Blessed by your Holy Spirit, gracious God, this water. By your Holy Spirit, save those who confess the name of Jesus Christ that sin may have no power over them. Create new life in the one baptized this day, that she may rise in Christ. Glory to you, eternal God, the one who was and is and shall always be, world without end.
Brody, John, Bergman. Save him in your steadfast love, that he may truly and faithfully keep his vows, loving and serving you until you receive him at last in your eternal home. Your verse? For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. In Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Thank you. 
yours forever and daily increase in him and your Holy Spirit until you receive him at the last in your eternal home. In your verse, teach me your way, Lord, so that I can walk in your truth. Make my heart focus only on honoring your name. Psalm 86, verse 11. I invite all the compliments to stay up front and come up front. We rejoice, O oh merciful God, that these people in the gift of the Holy Spirit and in the Spirit's power to awaken us to new truth and to inspire us to venture into the fullness of life. We give you thanks that you have they have been moved to affirm their baptism. Help them to live not only for themselves, but for Christ, and for those Christ loves. Keep them steady and abounding in hope, never giving up, pressing forward the goal of life with you in Christ Jesus. Amen. So this is the part about asking you if you want to become members of the church. So by your baptism, remember I said, Baptism, you're, you're all become members of the big church. You're made one with the body of Christ the church. And I celebrate the pilgrimage of faith that we brought you to this time and place. We celebrate your presence in this household of faith. So do you promise to participate in the life and mission of this family of God's people, the Hillsville United Church of Christ? sharing regularly in the worship of God and enlisting in the work of this local church as it serves this community and the world. And the answer is I promise with the help of God. Let us, the members of the United Church of Christ, express our welcome and affirm our mutual ministry in Christ. God's going to help us out with that. We promise you our continuing friendship and, and prayers as we share the hopes and labors of the Church of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we continue to grow together in God's knowledge and love and be witnesses of our risen Savior. So, in the name of Jesus Christ and on behalf of the United Church of Christ, we are going to give you the fist bump. Instead of the hand of Christian love. And so we welcome you, and it's good to have you guys as confirmed and as members. Oh my goodness, it has been a long journey for you.
Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always.